Hi, I'm Hal Millen, instructor for the CST311 online course, Introduction to Computer Networking. The majority of labs you will be working on in our class will be using a network emulator called MiniNet. This video is to guide you through the installation process on a Windows 10 machine. This video is an update of a similar video produced by Professor Mike McCann, who has taught both the face-to-face -face and online versions of this class. For this class, you will be running MiniNet in a Linux virtual machine, which we'll call a MiniNet VM. This VM will be managed by a hypervisor, Oracle's virtual box. Although you could use other hypervisors, I encourage you to use VirtualBox because I have tested the labs with this product. The installation steps are, first, download and unzip the MiniNet emulator, which is packaged with the Linux virtual machine. Next, download and install VirtualBox. Third step will be to import the MiniNet VM into VirtualBox. Then, configure the MiniNet VM for access via SSH. And finally, test by logging into the VM. Okay, let's get started by going to the mininet.org homepage. Scroll down further in the page and click on the Get Started link. This brings you to the download page. Choose option one, which is the easy and recommended Mininet VM installation. In step one, click on the Mininet releases. You will GitHub page with the heading MiniNet 2.3.0. Scroll down the page so you see assets. Choose the first file, which is the 32-bit version running under Ubuntu 16.04. You can tell this is a 32-bit version by the i386 and the file name. This is the version that has been tested for the labs in this class. While this is downloading, go back to the download page under option one and go to step two and select VirtualBox. Click on the VirtualBox link, it'll bring you to the Oracle VirtualBox page. And just scroll down to the VirtualBox platform packages and make sure you select the proper one for your host computer. Extracting the MidiNet VM zip files gives you a folder with two files inside. One of these files has an OVF extension. With this, you can now import the VM into the VirtualBox Manager. Start VirtualBox. Click on the file selection on the menu in the upper left-hand corner. In the pull-down menu, select Import Appliance. Now navigate to the directory where you installed, installed the MiniNet VMs. And select the OVF file. Select Next. And Import. The MiniNet VM should be ready to use. You can turn on the VM by selecting the appliance and clicking the green arrow on the top right half of the screen. As the VM boots up, a console screen will appear and you will see a lot of messages on the screen. One of the messages indicates that an open SSH server is turning on. When the VM has finished booting, you can log on. You can clear the screen of this extra stuff. The default username is MiniNet. And the password is MiniNet. Although you can work from this screen, it can be very awkward. The console window is small, the mouse can be captured, 
and you can't copy and paste. So you'll want to access the VM via your host computer using an SSH client. There is a link to a short explanation of the SSH protocol in the week zero resources on Canvas. To use the SSH client, you will have to configure the VM's network adapter. With VirtualBox, a network adapter is a virtual network interface card. Note that you can make this change while the VM is running. The adapter type is called NAT, or Network Address Translation. With this type of adapter, the VM can initiate communications with outside hosts, but outside hosts, including your computer, cannot initiate communications with the VM unless some special configuration called port forwarding is used. So go to the VirtualBox screen and click on the gear icon labeled settings. Then select network. Look at adapter one. Make sure the Enable Network Adapter box is checked. Make sure that you're attached to NAT. Now click on the small advanced arrow. The first thing to do is make sure the Cable Connected box is checked. It should be by default. Then click on the Port Forwarding box. You're going to add a rule by first clicking on the plus sign on the right. Let's call this rule SSH. We're gonna to have to change the host port and the guest port. For the host port, use port 2223. For the guest port, use port 22, which is the standard port for SSH. Click okay, okay. Now it's time to check this out. So open a Windows terminal session and type in the SSH command, SSH. And that's the username, at localhost. Localhost is the target computing running an SSH server. With a NAT adapter, you will be accessing the Mininet VM via your host computer's internal network stack. Hence, localhost is the computer name. Next, type in minus P and the port you use for the host port. The minus P flag indicates that the port number will follow. Hit enter. Since this is the first time you log on to this VM, you will get a warning message. SSH uses encryption keys and the SSH client and server have not exchanged keys. You'll be asked this question, are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes, no, fingerprint. Answer yes. Now you'll be asked for a password. Remember the password is Mininet. You are now logged into the home directory of the user Mininet. When you finish working in the virtual machine, you wanna close it down properly. So to exit the virtual machine, just type exit. We can close our terminal window. And we can bring up the console window and here, just click on the X and tell it to send the shutdown signal. In Canvas of Week Zero, there are links to videos that examine other SSH clients, such as Putty and MOBA Extern. This also talks about an X server software that you'll need to load to allow you to run GUI programs, such as Wireshark, on the virtual machine.